And I want you just to lift your hand all over this place because I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, my sons and daughters, I want you to be sensitive to the times in the Spirit. I want you to be sensitive to this transition season that you're coming into right now. For the Lord says things have changed whether you see it in the natural or not. Things have shifted in the Spirit whether you can actually see the fruit of that or not. And the Lord says, I am even decreeing to you today that the Pharaoh's armies, the enemies that have pursued you over this last season, the Lord says, I say to you today what I said to Israel then is that those that pursued you to this point, you will never see again. The Lord says that I am laying a plumb line today, says God. I have surely opened up a red sea of deliverance you may feel like you've been staring at a door of impossibility. You may feel like you've been looking disaster in the face. But the Lord says the door of disaster and the door of divine reversal look exactly alike. The door of, the, of disaster and the door of the supernatural look exactly alike until it opens. And the Lord says get your eyes out of the, uh, out of the mud. Get your eyes out of the mud grubs get your eyes out of depression the Lord says start lifting your eyes up start raising your expectation up for the Lord says I'm the God that parted the Red Sea then I'm the God that'll part your Red Sea now and the Lord says the Red Sea is going to take out your enemy says the Lord it's not just going to deliver you it's going to take out your enemy so Sally go ahead and blow that trumpet and let's give the Lord a shout today of declaration hallelujah Woo! Isaiah 59, 21 says, As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them, my spirit who is upon you. Everybody just lift your hands right now. God's spirit is upon you. Whatever you are going through, his spirit is upon you. And my words, which I have put in your mouth, shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your children, your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, your children's children, says the Lord, from this time forevermore. My words, which I put in your pay, will not depart from your pay, nor from the pay, the mouth, the sound, the voice of your children and your children's children. How many understand we can pretty much go through a lot of things ourselves, but when we see it affecting our kids, and when we see the enemy going after our kids, something goes off in us. Come on, it's time to take our kids back. Time to take generations back. Time to rise up and fight. So God's saying, listen, this is my covenant. And so this is something that the, Lord, that the Lord's been really speaking to me a lot about personally lately. And he's been speaking this to me um, out of the, the whole story of the children of Israel possessing the promise, possessing the promised land. God had this amazing promised land for them, but there were giants in the land. And they sent the spies out. Ten came back saying, it's a beautiful land, just like God said, but there's giants there. Two came back and said, it's a great land. Yeah, there's giants, but we eat giants for our bread. Come on, it's time to eat giants for our bread. What's your giant? Fear, anxiety, finances, family issues. Come on, whatever your giant is, God's saying, those giants are in the land for you to drive out. The question is, are we speaking the problem or are we speaking the promise? God says, I put my words in your mouth, but here's our choice. Are we speaking the problem or are we speaking the promise? I heard the Lord say this week, are my people game players or giant slayers? I felt like that was too hard of a message for all of y'all, so I had mercy, and I'm going to talk about camels instead. But No, but the, that's the question. Are we going to just play the game? Or are we going to be giant slayers? How many giant slayers are here? Vision Nation is full of giant slayers. But you know what that means? That means that we're going to have to face down the intimidation. 
We're going to have to deal with the junk. We're going to have to, we're going to have to square off and we're going to have to say, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to go after it until I see complete victory because God's given us giants for our bread. Amen. So right after this whole verse on covenant, then we see this amazing scripture in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 7. And it says, arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The first two words, arise, shine, literally mean wake up and be set on fire. Come on, church, wake up and be set on fire. I feel like everybody's just a little sleepy this morning. Was it the storm? We came home last night. We have tree branches all over our yard, big old huge tree branches, and our mailbox blew away. It was like blew across our yard. Somebody delivered mail to our house today. It must have been all up and down our street or something. Very wet mail, yes. Arise, shine, wake up, and be set on fire. You know what? We have to wake ourselves up. How many have to wake up every day? We have to wake ourselves up spiritually every day too. Otherwise, we can fall into slumber. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise on you, and his glory will be seen on you. Come on, put your hand on your belly and just decree the glory of God is rising on me. Then the Gentiles will come to your light, the unbelievers. And kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see they gather together. They come to you. Your sons come from afar. Your daughters shall be nursed at your side. How many are believing for sons and daughters to come back to the Lord? Come on. And then it says, then you shall see and become radiant and your heart will swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned unto you. The abundance of the sea always talks about harvest. Always talks about The blessings of God. It always talks about souls coming into the kingdom. Jesus said, I'll make you fishers of men. Then it says, the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude or the streams of camels shall cover your land. I don't personally want camels on our land, but let's look and see what they represent because I want all that. The dromedaries, which means young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. Sheba is, again, a covenant name. Sheba means covenant. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nebioth shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. You know who the house of his glory is? Certainly not this building. We are the house of his glory. God is saying, when you're in covenant with me, I want you to know all this can happen to you. I can bring awakening to you. I can bring revival to you. I can stir things up. I can take you out of hopelessness into hope. I can take you out of death into life. I can take you out of sorrow into joy. Come on, I can, I can do that divine exchange. Instead of your shame, I can give you double honor. Yes. 